All right, what's up everybody? Uh, we are trying to bring something new to the YouTube channel. For those of you who are subscribers to uh, solve for ytv you've seen the Poker Out Loud product. Now what we want to introduce is uh, a new product of sorts where we are going to begin uh, bringing the students into the Poker Out Loud show. So this very first season, it's you, me, and four of what I would consider to be like our top students. Agreed. Uh, I think the way to make this interesting since you know we're gonna be out there teaching lessons, turn this into a bit of a competition. I like it. So I'm thinking we draft two players each, mm -hmm. and then we cross book some percentage okay. uh, up to a thousand because I'm a gambling man. Um, I was thinking like 25. <laughs> team versus team. I think that's fine. I think I'm a favorite. Okay. Any team I'm in All right. is gonna be the favorite. You don't even know. We didn't even draft yet. My, my team's the favorite. <laughs> Because I'm on that team. It's like LeBron. So, so you're going to give me first pick then? You can have first pick. Actually, I think there might be more, more power to second you pick. You already pick. said first pick. All right, so, so the way we're going to draft this is uh, the person with first pick is going to get to draft their number one choice. The next person is effectively going to get to round out the draft. So they take the next two and then stick the uh, first pick with the fourth. And that's, was that round robin? Uh, sort of. When there's only four people, but it's there's tough no to round. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough to call it anything. It's just a robin. All right. Uh, with my first round draft pick, I'm gonna take Lukic. Ah. Okay, I'll take Chris Price and and uh, Chris K. So you get the Chris's. Yeah. All right. It's Team Chris, baby. <laughs> Seize up. Okay, so um, we're gonna play a full season's. Wait, so who's the Colorado. who's your other? So who's the I, have, final? I have Fausto, uh, Luke, Michael Lukic, and Yo, me. Let's book a thousand percent. Now he wants to <laughs> have it. You're fucking dead. <laughs> Okay, um, definitely two of the stickier blinds that I'll be up against. Uh, really, my button and cutoff are gonna be uh, handled by a lot of resistance. So I need to be constructing a strategy here that is gonna allow me to actually realize the positional edge. Um, effectively, I'm not just gonna get to open any two cards here, expecting them to either overfold or call and then check fold too often post. So, it's really critical that I actually maintain some level of construction. That said, I'll still be opening probably somewhere in the neighborhood of like 45 to 50% of hands. Um, offsuit, jack six, very clear lay down. I just wanted to kind of uh, get my strategy out in the open to begin with. Okay, um, Matt folded here, which I'm shocked because uh, he must be realizing that we're gonna be probably calling a little wider because we're anticipating him to open up quite a few more hands. Um, I'm against uh, Fausto to my left. I don't know him very well. I've never played with him all that much. Um, I think my hand is fine for an open here, suited queen three. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, open to a hold them out with this hand. Um, we're gonna make it 35 to go and see how he reacts. So just in general, I'm gonna keep my strategy G basic and my default, which is gonna involve a lot of aggression and um, just in a general sense. Here in the blinds with this hand I'm definitely gonna defend and just see how this dynamic develops. Okay, so flop comes, we have top pair, but it's a 
uh, range neutral board, um, monotone, I'm going to likely uh, check call most of my range here, uh, anticipating Festo is likely going to lead out with a lot of his uh, combinations that have a single spade, obviously. Um, also, when he's connected with second pair or, or even third pair, especially on this board, with higher spades. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and check uh, with the intent of check calling. I was actually curious to see if he was going to bet on this board texture. It's uh, rather neutral. A lot of his middle part of his range shouldn't be betting. It's not going to be able to withstand a lot of resistance. So good to see that he checked. With my particular hand, it just has very poor equity. Um, I'm going to have a lot of better choices in my range, uh, especially in a blind to blind formation where I don't really have to take this hand and just start going crazy, so I'm just gonna check back. Still the monotone, four to a flush now. Um, I feel like I'm pretty much handcuffed into uh, just a check fold line at this point, mainly because I block pretty much nothing other than uh, the top pair hands and uh, bigger broadways, but uh, he's still gonna have a lot of those spades uh, as well. Um, I'm kind of resigned to check folding this point on. I'm a little curious on the fact that we checked back on purpose uh, for the suit check. I'm not gonna read too much into it. Something I'm just gonna look back. Um, same theme with my hand, just going to check back, I'm not going to start going crazy. Plus, I'm already pretty sure I'm going to be perceived to be aggressive in this dynamic, so I'm just going to keep it simple and wait for equitable hands. Okay, so we complete out, and we're still sitting top pair. Um, I mean, I, I think we're, at best, you know, really I'm not even like bluff catching at this point. I think that's going to go check, check to showdown. So I'm going to go ahead and check one more time. Check. Chin's big blind here. Gonna open. Uh, this is close. I don't really know Chris all that well. And um, I know that both Chin and Fast are gonna be very sticky on the left. I could three bet this hand. It's a pretty good three bet candidate. Um, but uh, I'm gonna wait and play a little more tight just to kind of see uh, how things progress throughout the rest of the evening, and uh, let this one go. So this hand can go either way, obviously. I can use it as a three bet, or I could use it as a call. However, I wanna use it as a call and mostly be three betting him pretty linearly uh, with my suited variety as well as uh, hands like H plus on uh, some coverage of suited connectors. Now, because of the uncappedness of this hand, it can play outside of cap post flop as in introducing some interesting check raises, interesting leads, etc. cetera. Uh, so I'm gonna play a, a call strategy here with this hand. Because I unblocked his folding region here, I could use this as an overbluff C bet, or I can choose to check and then turn it into a delayed overbluff uh, spot. Because of that, I want to choose the check option and then proceed with 
some over bluffs on some turns at four straight the board. I don't expect to see a seabed here at too high of a frequency. Uh, if I was to have a diamond, I'd probably choose the option of uh, leading here at a high frequency, but I think we get to just delay our overbluff here uh, a fair amount of the time. Check. So we flopped this advantage here to Chin, who defended the big blind. I am probably going to have few bets, if any, in this formation on this texture. I think my particular holding is a decent candidate, given how high our equity is. I probably also bet over pairs without a diamond, but given that we can take some heat with this hand, it will function nicely as the bottom. And since we have a low frequency, going to choose a larger size of 60. So this hand is mostly going to function as a flop fold. Um, interesting that Chris chooses to bet this hand, um, which I think is fine. He probably has a hand class, something in the vicinity of like nines that need some protection. Um, I will have a lot of availability to continue here uh, with some hands. So I think this hand without a diamond, without no spade, uh, probably is going to function as a flop fold. I think having a poker out loud that is just students is very valuable simply because looking back, like even for myself, like looking back at poker out loud, seeing the decisions that were made both from myself and other players is extremely valuable. So any student that wants to come in and play that role is going to be both an extremely good learning tool for them at the moment, but also for players that are at their same level, their peers, that they might be having the same thought processes, whether good or bad. A5 of diamonds would be a hand that would open against like some pretty weak lineups uh, with Berkey's big blind and uh, Lukic being on the button. I think this is a pretty disrespectful open if I was to choose so. So this is a spot where I probably need to be passing. Uh, bottom of range will probably be like 8-6 of diamonds. Uh, so I'm just outside of that. So I'm just going to choose the fold option. All right. So I'm going to be raising fairly widely, widely here from the button. Um, this is not the best of hands, but it's definitely worth an open. So I'm going to make it. Michael chooses a 4x raise size from the button, uh, just something to take interesting note of. I imagine he's trying to dissuade me from peeling wide and, uh, you know, basically when I do, he'll get to play a bloated pot in position and leverage that against me. Uh, I have 10 off, very clear fold here. If he continues to choose a larger size, I'll actually probably start to shift more towards a three better fold strategy than um, a wide calling strategy. So it looks like the, the standard open is moving into a 4x sizing, which means that in a general sense, you're going to want to be three betting more than calling. Uh, so let's see what develops uh, with the 4x open size moving forward. I don't think it's a bad thing given the fact that uh, we're all pretty deep. I'm going to be using uh, more like dynamic size. I think my early positions opens will be smaller and my later position opens will be bigger. All right, so uh, from this lineup, I think, without even looking at my cards, this is probably gonna be one of the best positions that I have throughout, and if I have some cards, um, but I'm probably gonna play looser from this position than I normally would from the cutoff, um, than I would versus any other position, but uh, this is a clear fold out of the spot. All right, I'm really getting dealt the bottom here, but uh, in a blind versus blind scenario, I am going to try to play a little bit tough. Um, Jack six off is certainly in most constructed strategies just going to be a fold. Uh, I'm going to force Chris to defend against me. I, th I think I'm going to have a pretty robust limping range here. 
I feel like if I'm gonna V-pip this hand, it probably should be in the form of a raise, but I don't wanna get out of line necessarily in my aggressive strategy just yet. So I'm gonna limp, uh, basically taking a wider limping range than I otherwise would and force him to be aggressive. Okay, blind versus blind. Um, I'm gonna be coming into this uh, flop in position against Matt. Um, I think that he uh, probably recognizes that um, I'm obviously gonna be playing a little bit wider even if he was deciding to open um, a little wider. Uh, it looks like he's V-pipping, so I'm going to likely, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and raise this hand and uh, see what comes on the flop. All right, uh, so Chris does prove to follow through with the raise. Uh, could be a hand, could just be a strategy he's trying to employ. Obviously, I have one of my very clear limp folds. Um, you know, it, this hand isn't worthless to me. It does demonstrate that I build out a limp folding strategy, which will encourage him to be a little bit more aggressive in the future. Ah, Berkey trying to play good today. <laughs> Are you trying to play good today? <laughs> well, six-handed in a regular lineup, I would almost always open this hand in full combinations. But into Berkey's button with a propensity to three bet and present aggression post. And also Fausto's big blind whom I expect to three bet being a lot, I am just going to fold. Okay, uh, so here we are again, blind versus blind. Um, last time we're in the situation, he did see me show down, queen three suited. Um, I have seven, eight uh, offsuit, so I'm going to likely um, I'm going to uh, complete here with the intent of uh, calling a raise. Um, I do want to, uh, I don't want to fold out too many of my hands in the small blind, especially in a blind versus blind situation. Um, and so calling and seeing what fast it is next. So real quick, I just realized that I think Chris might tone down his opening because Berkey's a barrier uh, between me and him. And the reason I keep mentioning Chris is because we're known to get into big pots. Uh, so I kind of expect his range to be a little bit tighter. Uh, this part right now is interesting. He opened pre before with queen three suited. This time he's choosing to limp. Not sure why and how he's constructing, but just gonna see which frequency he takes a higher action with. Uh, with this hand, uh, we're just gonna keep it simple again and just go post. Okay, um, it's a range advantage flop and uh, we flop uh, like some equity with obviously the gutty. Um, I am likely going to take a check call line, hoping for favorable turns. Um, I think that uh, a lot of the action that we had in our last blind versus blind is probably going to uh, push some of the action inside of this hand. Um, I don't want to give too much away early in the session because uh, I'm sure that a lot of the things that I'm doing right now, like he's fast as, uh, fast as no dummy, and I know that he's likely going to be uh, really trying to take into account how I played this hand compared to, uh, and, and using that information for later hands in the session. So we're gonna check with the intent of uh, calling, likely not check raising this board. The B was just about to drop on my song. Um, with my particular hand, the path going forward uh, it's dark, I have no backdoors. I have a weird backdoor straight. Um, 
I'm just gonna take the little bit of whatever equity I have. Uh, just go. I'm just gonna go ahead and bet. See how he starts reacting. Uh, see what this dynamic is gonna form. Uh, so we're just gonna keep pot is small. So we're just gonna bet 15 and then just see what he does. Okay, so um, facing a $15 bet, um, I think we still have equity inside of this hand. Um, it's likely this could be something he's doing with position with a lot of uh, hands that just completely miss, hoping to take this down immediately. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just not let him deny me this, uh, this get shot straight draw equity. Plus I have a lot of good back doors that I think uh, help me. Uh, I think it's reasonable that if I do hit uh, either of my cards here as well on the turn that I could likely end up with the best hand. Um, I think that uh, it's just a, a tough spot in these blind versus blind spots where um, you know we're both playing relatively wide as we both kind of just uh, came into the pot for the minimum. So I'm going to go ahead and call and see what happens next. Uh, we're kind of sitting in the same position. I'm going to um, check and uh, hopefully see a check behind. Um, I think we're likely check folding a lot of these spots um, as you know we're, we're sitting here with eight high in a dream. So just to clarify, the reason I want to keep poking around is to allow me to realize how sticky. Uh, the player is going to be. The more sticky he is, the more I got to control the types of hand I put into my betting bucket. Um, that being said, with a six coming on the turn, I do anticipate a good amount of four X, six X, some ace highs in his range, some middle pocket pairs, along with weaker jack X that he could have in his uh, range leading up to now. With me picking up no additional equity, uh, just gonna keep it simple, just check back, and uh, hopefully I catch a nine so I could bluff catch. Um, hands that I could rep here uh, are, I mean, the, I, I would be taking the line I have with, uh, with a four often. Um, very rarely a six, I would let that go through. And this three doesn't really touch either of us. Um, I would typically take a stab at this um, if I had uh, other parts, like higher parts of my range, but I'm going to effectively just give up at this point and check. So I'm definitely gonna check back, but I just wanna mention I do block the potential straight, but given that I took the line of bet check, and if I were to decide to bet now, I get called at two higher with frequency. So it's gonna check back, see what he shows, and then keep that in mind in terms of spreading my ranges going forward. Wait, whoa. You guys want to cut that hand out or? Let's keep it in. <laughs> okay. I mean. Let's go. <laughs> you both had like really good hands to bluff and nobody bluffed. <laughs> Did you see this showdown? Nine. What? Did you miss this showdown? I saw. 9-5 high beats 7-8 high or 7-6 Yeah, high. that's right. Yeah. It's part of my plan. Uh, this is the student's show. I got it. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> that makes sense. Prior to attending so for a while. I was working a lot with Christian, and I was in the midst of working. I was working in a bank, and I really, really wanted to get out of there. So <laughs> I worked a lot with Christian over the years. Um, and then Christian, this is like the beginning of software why Christian mentioned like I should come, so I came, and it was amazing. When you're a poker player, uh, if you're trying to do it professionally, this you are your business and any business that you have you need to invest to get better so if i was running a pizza shop or a coffee shop 
I want to invest in the best materials, the best people that's going to bring me to the next level. You know, working with the RFID tables, the, having the coaches commentate on your gameplay um, was pretty amazing. And I met a bunch of great guys. So um, ever since that, um, I did became professional. I, I found the courage to quit my job and it's been three years since doing that. So. So I think I'm going to be pretty handicapped throughout this session, merely given that I have Berkey on my direct left. So I think I'm going to be pretty careful with my opens. 35. Against uh, Chris's open um, under the gun, um, I think uh, a lot of the fact that kind of the, the same reasons I have uh, I'm a little bit uh, handcuffed here, I think, from a chin in the small blind and Fausto on the button. Um, I think Chris is probably feeling a lot of the same pressure from uh, Matt on my right. Uh, I don't think he's going to be opening super light in this spot. I have a, a decent holding for a, a good candidate for a, um, a three bet in this spot. Um, I'm going to opt to uh, three bet, but I'm gonna three bet uh, sizing just a like. I'm not gonna go s super huge. I'm not gonna pull out. Um, so I'm gonna probably do like a 2.5, hoping to jump into this heads up and in position. Monday. Yeah, Monday. So I was anticipating what I would do if he decided to three bet. Largely with player pool, uh, somebody opening under the gun with a combination of three betting tends to be on the tighter side, which will lead me to fold, which I kind of want to do now also. Uh, but given his sizing, we'll have a deep enough SPR if I do decide to call and give me some wiggle room and playability going forward. Um, by me calling here, this could also try to discourage him from three betting too much, which will lead into another dynamic. My hesitation comes from not knowing if he's three betting merge or not, but given what I know about the player, I anticipate that he could be three betting merge, perhaps. So I'm just gonna go ahead and call and uh, see what happens. And I'm just gonna largely react to the equity that's provided to me uh, going forward. All right, so <laughs> I knew this was gonna start happening. Um, I don't have a hand that can play, but um, just a couple things that I want to uh, note here is that uh, Chris's open under the gun was to 35. He opened to 40 in the past, so I'm not sure if that means anything. It probably doesn't, but it's just something to keep an eye on. And I'd expect other Chris to be fairly linear um, with his pretty small three bet there too. So I'm um, interested to see, hopefully this gets to showdown. So I expect to be up against two very strong ranges here. I think Fausto will likely be cold calling pretty uncapped, expecting a four bet from me at some frequency. And I don't think people are going to attack my under the gun open, particularly wide. Not much reason to four bet this particular candidate whose primary EV is derived from post flop. I have to fold something, but I think I can just fold my king queen off, king jack off, maybe deuces. It's not too big of a three bet anyway. 90. So, gonna check here. Um, I am uh, definitely checking here. Uh, we went to this three-handed. Um, I'm sitting in that kind of a, a, a weird spot between these two guys. Uh, I definitely have, I think, one of the weaker holdings that I would show up here with. Um, I am checking. So the ranges that I'm anticipating 
uh, between the two, Chris largely having pocket pairs, the stronger Broadway region. That's all gonna naturally check here. With the three better, him checking here might be a reaction because I have position and he's now in a multi-way spot. I do think his range is, again, it's probably gonna be Broadway dance, uh, some pocket pair, some ASEX. I anticipate some defense here, uh, but my hand having some back doors uh, largely is gonna want to deny. And I do have King X coverage myself here, so it's not out of the norm that I could bet and get rid of their nothings also. I'm gonna bet half pot given that we're deep enough in SPR that I'm just gonna bet normal, normal, have natural reactions from their ranges that naturally folds. I don't want to over invite them with a smaller bet. So I'm just gonna go a bet normal, uh, hopefully shed somebody away and see if I pick up equity on the turn. Pretty surprised to see a bet out of Fausto here. He should respect that once the three better checks, his range is largely showdown driven. So ideally he wouldn't have any bluffs because the initial razor has a showdown dense check. His linear suited broadways should be pretty naturally continuing of hearts, clubs, and diamonds at least. So I expect Falso to respect that formation and just have a good hand here. I would be pretty surprised if he had like a Jack-10 suited type hand. I think he's weighted more towards top pair queens, that region. Okay, so Fausto uh, bets out, um, and you know I, I think he knows my three bets merge the best, um, and uh, I'm anticipating he has you know a lot of pocket pairs, um, some uh, top pair hands. I think he probably also is sitting with some, uh, probably a lot of different back doors uh, where I'm relatively handcuffed and I have no good possibilities other than, um, I guess, straight back doors, but uh, I just can't really see continuing um, here, so I'm going to fold. <laughs> Where do I cash out? <laughs> 